Now the Sunday School Short today, we're finishing up Ezekiel. We're in 46 through 48. This is the Millennial Temple uh, and its procedures. This is the thousand year reign of Christ. And in 46 starts out, the Lord says, The eastern gateway of the inner courtyard. So that's that. I'm going to show that picture now. That inner building, the inner entrance housing to the inner court. It looks similar to the outer I call it the entry house, but it's the inner gateway there to the inner courtyard. It's closed for six days, the eastern way. But it's open on the Sabbath and new moon festivals. The prince will enter the eastern gate, gateway, uh, inner courtroom, that entry house there, while the priest burns offerings and peace offerings, burn offerings and peace offerings, the prince will bow and worship, then leave from the same way he entered. All right, the common people will enter, as you can see, um, the common people will bow and worship in front of the eastern gateway inner house there, inner house, entry house. Um, but they have to enter the area itself from the north gateway and exit through the south gateway, or if they entered from the south gateway, vice versa. You know, you, you can't enter and exit the same way. The prince does, but nobody else does. And then on verse 4, it talks about each Sabbath, the prince will present six lambs, one ram, all with no defects, flour, olive oil, etc. Now, on the new moon festival, it's very similar, except he will add an additional uh, young, one young bull. Verses 13 through 18 goes on to talk about further sacrifices and land exchanges such as that. And verses 19 through 24 talk about the sacred rooms where the priest cooked the meat and they baked the grain that was used um, as offerings. Essentially the tithes from the people. And then on the four corners, it goes on to talk about the, the four corners of the outer walls uh, where you can see the kitchens. They're 70 feet by 52 feet. They're the kitchens where they would boil the sacrifices offered by the people. Uh, can you imagine bringing your pastor just barbecue every week? That's, you know, barbecue's great, but, you know, just so much, instead of a sour, you know, hey, here's a uh, thing from Shane's pastor, you know, but do this. Encourage your pastor. Love your pastor. Uh, they are oftentimes, most of the time, good people that are overworked and underpaid and certainly underappreciated. Pray for them and serve them however you can, as you can. 47 and 48, Ezekiel 47 and 48, talks about the river of life or the river of healing. Man brought me to the entrance of the temple. I saw a stream from beneath the temple door. It went along the right side of the altar, as you can see in the picture there, uh, the south side of the eastern gate. He took me along the stream at uh, 1,750 feet, or whatever the cubits was equivalent, uh, it was ankle deep. Another 1,750 feet, it was knee deep. Another 1,750 feet, it was waist deep. And then another 1,750 feet after that, he said he had to swim. I uh, couldn't walk anymore. In verse 6, he asked me, Have you been watching, son of man? And Ezekiel saw many trees on both sides of the river. The uh, man said, uh, The river flows east through the desert into the Dead Sea. Um, waters will make the Dead Sea pure and fresh again. Fish will abound. There will always be fruit in the trees, and a new crop will grow each month. Verses 13 through 23 discuss the boundaries of the land of Israel in this new millennium. And the it goes from the Mediterranean and describes the northern boundary. Then it cuts east, uh, southbound, and uh, talks about the cities that it hits along the eastern border. Then it turns back and talks about the southern border until it meets up with the Mediterranean and that Mediterranean of course is the western boundary. Ezekiel 48 further describes these boundaries or breaks these up even further into the 12 tribes of Israel to include the area that's set aside in Judah, the area that's set aside for the temple. That area is uh, as we talked about in days past about eight miles by about six miles. Then there was an area of for temple workers which was about eight by six and then there was a area for the priests and the common area um, for other things that was also about eight by six miles. Ezekiel ends uh, describing the walls around Jerusalem. They were a mile and a half long. They had three gates on each side and 
they are named after the 12 tribes of Israel. There's six miles uh, around the perimeter there. And in verse 35, And from that day, the name of the city will be, The Lord is there. Thanks for joining me for Ezekiel. Get in Daniel. Some of Ezekiel is hard to understand, but we impacted it a little bit, right? And we saw the maps. That makes it come alive. The YouTube videos, watch those. Not, not mine, but the ones that I linked up to that breaks down this temple. That uh, helps it come alive. Go to Israel if you can. That really makes it come alive. God bless you. Like, subscribe, and share if this is a blessing to you.